I'm back at one of my favourite spots, and uh, this is the Wilton Formation. This is in the uh, in the Sydney Basin, and um, what I just want to show you today is um, various sedimentary deposits. And what we might do is just have a look at some of those, some different structures, and just see if we can um, try to break down what may have occurred during the formation of what we see in front of us. So unless you're an experienced stratigrapher or geologist um, with a good understanding of sedimentary structures, you're going to look at this and scratch your head a little bit because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of different processes uh, that went into the formation of what we're looking at right now. So in order to gain a little bit more of an understanding of what could possibly have occurred, and I'm no expert in this particular science um, is constantly changing and I'm sure there's some people out there that have a far more advanced knowledge of this than myself but I'll go through this and we'll just see if we can't get, get an idea of what uh, possibly occurred. Okay so we might as well just start here um, because I mean this as you saw it's pretty similar throughout there's the processes that went into the creation of uh, this particular formation repeated itself um, over and over again. So starting down here what we see is um, a bed that's um, very grey, it's got some black through it, there doesn't seem to be any kind of recognisable structures. We uh, maybe further down here we can see a small section of small laminations and so from looking at these small laminations what we see is that this has been deposited by water that wasn't flowing very fast because if the water was flowing any faster we would get uh, cross bedding and um, it wouldn't resemble this kind of structure. So then why is it that we've gone from seeing these particular laminations into um, a bed where we can't make out any kind of any kind of bedding structure or we'll get an understanding of how that formed and what we're looking at is what's known as bioturbation and this particular bed here has been or the sediment within this bed has been reworked by various organisms uh, in this case most or probably would have been some kind of worm or invertebrate and the soil has been uh, churned up, um, dug up and um, reworked so all the various planar lamination sets that we saw down here have now disappeared as this soil has been reworked. Here interestingly um, we've got a separate kind of plastic sediment uh, or, or rock that's been embedded. Um, it may have been deposited by a small um, bit of ice. Um, anyway, that's interesting that we've got um, a clust in here that is, um, is different from the surrounding, from the surrounding um, bed. So moving up a little bit, again, the similar planar laminations that we see here have repeated themselves. And um, what we see are very fine red and white layers. So I might just stop and we'll push in and check that out a little closer. Knowing this kind of bed is, um, or being able to recognise this kind of structure is, is pretty important and this can be interpreted, interpreted in various ways and um, this is known as valve layering and in this case what we see is various red layers and um, white layers and one of the ways in which this can be interpreted is that the red layers were exposed to more air and um, greater oxidization has occurred um, during the formation of those particular layers. Another interesting thing to observe when you're looking at these is that they're usually um, deposited in um, annual couplets. So we've got red, white, red, white, and um, each of those 0.5 of a millimeter valve layers um, in pairs could be uh, interpreted as being one year of deposition or um, one year of sediment. So continuing up this is where we we're just looking at and if we go up a bit further we've got more um, bioturbation that's occurred 
and then going up to this interesting layer here, what we see various current ripples. And just here, we even see a little bit of um, cross cross uh, cross laminations, um, or when a current was great enough that uh, these type of structures could be formed. And uh, these wavy, these, this wavy kind of um, look to it indicates. Um, Associated association with a current, which means that the water velocity may have been greater and um, it would have also been shallower. So moving up from this um, current form structure, um, well one interesting, other interesting thing that we can see is that the layers are a lot lighter than the bioturbated layers um, above and below it. And the reason for that may have been that it came into contact with the sun and again um, it has been leached. So um, these iron sulfides and things that make up the darker layers have uh, leached out and the iron oxides and things have had a chance to react with oxygen as well and uh, remove some of, that, um, some of that iron. Going up a bit further we've got another bioturbated bed followed by more, as we saw before, um, laminations. These just settled um, in, in what's known as fallout without traction. So each of the individual grains of sediment um, actually were suspended in water and settled to the bottom again, creating annual couplets. So looking at that particular section right there gives us an indication of possibly how quickly all of these other sections roughly um, may have been may have been um, deposited and as I said before looking at these um, we can see the small um, annual couplets and just that small amount there um, you know could be more than a hundred years of sediment um, deposition right there might just leave it there because as you can see those layers do repeat themselves. We've got bioturbation with planar laminations with some current induced formations and we can see now that the red layers um, are oxidized um, darker layers because the darker layers are iron sulfides and the red layers are oxidizing iron, iron oxide and um, and we can see this repeated throughout, the, throughout uh, what you're looking at right now. Now if you're interested in this kind of thing um, and you live within the Sydney Basin, come and check out the formation at um, Ostermere or Thoreau, but this kind of, um, or these kind of sedimentary structures can be seen all over the world. Maybe you have some uh, close to where you live. And if you do, get out there and check them out because it's quite an interesting field and it's not really opened up to the amateurs that much because it is quite a difficult science. But again, if you understand a couple of the key pieces, you will appreciate the science and um, it will also trigger your curiosity to investigate further and um, I, hope, I hope that's, uh, that's happened a little bit.